If you've ever met someone who is genuinely thriving and wondered, what's their secret? Well, then this is the podcast for you. Welcome to The Marvelous Podcast. Marvelous friends, it's Marta Kagan, your host. I am back for season two of the Be Marvelous podcast. I cannot believe we already did an entire season. Um, I am flying solo this season. My delightful co host, Steph Sigler, had a beautiful baby boy a few months ago, and she is taking some time to be with him, to really enjoy motherhood and this new chapter. And so you are stuck with me indefinitely. (laughs) Um, But we are keeping the format the same. I have so many amazing guests for this season. And starting with today, we're going to jump right in to do some heart healing. We're going to talk about some of the ways that our childhood wounds keep us stuck, keep us trapped, keep us hurt, and keep us protecting ourselves in ways that are actually not useful, that are no longer serving us. And we're going to talk specifically about a very beautiful and unique modality that can unlock that and can rewire the nervous system and allow you essentially to heal yourself. And my guest today is going to tell us all about this because she's an expert in this. She is a clinical hypnotherapist. She is a change maker, a mindset coach, and really she is a healer. Bottom line, she's a healer. She helps people heal themselves by using root cause therapy and rapid transformational therapy and something called heart healing, all of which she's going to tell us about today to help people make beautiful, positive life changes, to free themselves from the shackles of self-sabotage and addiction and anxiety and all sorts of issues that come up because of trauma, largely because of trauma. What I love about Melissa is that she is just such a kind, positive, resilient human herself. She walks her talk. She's the co-author of a collaborative book called When Women Heal, where she writes about her story uh, in a chapter called The Heart of the Matter. And she believes that it's never too late to make a change for the better. And I could not agree more. I'm so excited for you to meet Melissa, to hear her story, and to learn about heart healing. So please welcome to the show, the wonderful Melissa Paz. So Melissa... Welcome to the Be Marvelous podcast. So happy to have you here today. And I'm excited to share this unbelievable healing modality with my listeners. Like, we're always looking for new ways to improve our ability to navigate life's shit sandwiches, if you will. Uh, We're always looking for new ways to improve our mental and emotional fitness you know, how we handle our nervous systems, how we deal with feelings, how we deal with dysregulation, all those things. But the the underlying thread to a lot of the distress that we as humans feel is unresolved trauma, unresolved wounds, right? Stuff that happened years or decades ago that we, we might not remember. We certainly didn't have the capacity to to deal with as we might now as an adult. We didn't have the resources. We might not have even had the language to describe it, right? And what you offer to your clients is able to like get into with like a laser pointer, kind of cut it out, transmute it, alchemize it, put it back together. Voila. It's amazing. Yeah. And and thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yes. What I help people do is heal at the root cause of the issue or the problem. Um, we all have um, wounds around our heart and you know, we all have experiences where we feel rejected or betrayed or not feeling enough and all those things are not worth, you know, all these things, but we carry it so intensely around our heart. Yeah. So when we can meet the younger version of ourselves or 
meet the person who hurt us within our heart. It's like a rescue and heal. We're there to help her and protect her and have her understand what happened then, heal it and let it go, but also heal the relationship wound and see that, you know, it's not what's wrong with us. It's what happened to us. It's the feelings we attach to happened to us or what happened within us. And most often it's those feelings we attach when we're young to keep us safe. Yeah. And those safety mechanisms turn into self-sabotage right? and, and negative coping skills later in life. A hurt child can earn to, turn into an angry person or yeah. a people pleaser because that's what's familiar to them. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about the patterns that we develop, right? During these 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 soft, squishy periods of our lives when we're very young, where we, you know, we refer to children as sponges, and that's because their their brains are developing and their nervous systems are still developing. And so the information we take in then gets stored, like it it sort of cements differently, right? Like it just gets in deeper and becomes the foundation, it becomes the operating system. That you then work with as an adult and you might, you know, throw in new software. Absolutely. Periodically, but that's still running underneath. Yeah. We also often don't understand what happened to us because we're little, little sponges, like you said, mm-hmm. we're little sponges and we don't understand death. We don't understand consequences. We don't understand, you know, I'm disappointed in you or shame on you because how could we? We don't understand being scolded. We don't understand getting in trouble. We don't, you know, consequences that go with what what happens or the trauma or the unmet needs. Because unmet needs um, are are trauma too, because we need to to connect. We need to be seen. We need to be heard. And when we're not, we put up these protective shields around our heart or you know, in our mind to keep us safe. So most of the, our coping mechanisms later in life as adults are from wounds from when we're children or little sponges or adolescents. Yes. Yes. And so we're all walking around. We are the walking wounded, essentially, no matter what we look like on the outside, I might add, right? It doesn't matter how polished you, you seem or how put together or how confident uh, we've all experienced wounds and to varying degrees, some some of the adults out there who look like they have their shit together may actually have their shit together in the sense that they've done some of this work. Um, but I want to point out that a it's 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 never ending. There's always more to be done as long as you're alive. And b most people haven't gotten very far in the work, if at all. Sadly, um, and a lot of people wear masks. Yes, and, yes, yes, and they're right. not being their true authentic self, which can honestly bite them in the you know what oh yeah we can swear here you can say bite them in the ass (laughs) Gary you know even even early on you know when we get hurt as kids that's not our fault and that's a huge a huge thing often what happens to us and how we interpret what happens to us isn't our fault Mm -hmm. because we don't understand but as adults it's our responsibility to heal yes Let's say that again. What happens to you as a child is not your fault, but as an adult, it is your responsibility to heal that and work with that. And, you know, your behavior as an adult, if you have bad behavior, bad coping skills, and I'm using the word bad, but if you're reactive instead of responsive and you're mean to your people or your partner or your children Mm -hmm. or an asshole. Yeah. You. Yeah. That's where those wounds trickle down to. The wounding hurts the entire family and the people that we love. But when we heal, there's a ripple effect to everyone that we love. So you can turn it around. You can heal in a short time. It's it's crazy how uh, the work I do changes people's lives and their families' lives quickly. Yes, yes, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the work you do, because I'm I'm confident that some of our listeners have never heard any of these terms before. And you shared several. There's um, root cause therapy, and there was 
regression therapy was a separate one. That would be the rapid transformational therapy, which is root cause therapy or regression therapy. And so they're all synonyms. So that that one term is all, those are all all synonyms. Yeah. Heart healing is another modality. It's a little bit different than the root cause therapy because we're healing the heart and we actually take a journey within the heart. We take on the walls around the heart, opening us up to receiving love, health, happiness, money, everything that we desire. But it's a different, it vibrates tighter. So it's, there's an energetic shift with heart healing. Yeah. And, you know, if somebody wants to quit smoking and I can help people quit smoking in one session, right? Uh That's a regression therapy. We're going to go back to the root. The reason in the smoking, it would be connection and and they're cool. Well, that was then. And now yep. it's hurting them, it's isolating them, all these things. So, yep. um, you know, I help people with addictions. I help with anxiety, help with people with depression. Um, and we talked about urgency and agency. You know, these modalities are available. And instead of 10 years, 20 years on the sofa, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can help people heal their issues and problems in sessions instead of years, instead of yes. decades. Which is, which is amazing. And I've been so excited lately about the fact that I've um, been fortunate enough to be introduced to or discovered, you know, a host of these other tools that are available, these other therapeutic modalities that allow us to heal parts of ourselves without a prescription pad, without surgery or anything invasive, and without, as you said, years on the couch. Just caveat here, disclaimer for listeners, it doesn't, it doesn't always mean that in one snap instant, you're quote unquote fixed, as we already said, it can be a process, but there can be profound shifts that immediately feel like, oh my God, I've just unburdened like this, this pain does not feel like it's eating me alive anymore. And from there you can, you know, work with whatever needs to be worked with there. Um, and, and I'm talking about things like what, you, what you're going to share in a little bit more detail in a moment. So the heart healing and the uh, root cause therapy and also EMDR and brain spotting and other somatic techniques that are working with our subconscious, which is where most of this stuff lives and hides like really well hidden um, and yet operating in plain sight and in our bodies, which is the other piece of it. <clears throat> hey, it's Marta. Sorry to interrupt the show for a moment, but I wanted to tell you about a brand new program that I am so excited about called Fuck Yes. Now, Fuck Yes is not your typical mastermind or group coaching program. No, my friend, this is something far juicier, far more delicious, and light years more embodied than anything you flirted with before. To be specific, Fuck Yes is a three-month group embodiment program for women who are sick of apologizing for wanting more, who are ready to embrace their longing, push their edges, and boldly leap into their power and radiance. Over three gorgeous months, we're going to work with some of the most potent embodiment tools and psycho-spiritual practices together to retrain your mind, your body, and your nervous system to work for you in every imaginable way. In other words, we're going to shake things up, turn you on, and ignite your lust for living as boldly and audaciously as possible. Now, I'll say it again, Fuck Yes is not a program for everyone. But if you're listening to this podcast, my bet is that it just might be for you. So if you're the kind of person that's a high performer who gets shit done, and yet you have this nagging feeling that there is more to life, if you're hungry for a potent blend of practical coaching, embodied manifesting, and meaningful accountability, if you crave the judgment-free support and accountability of a small group of amazing women who have big dreams and a lust for living their most fuck yes lives, if you are so ready to release the old stories, traumas, and patterns that keep you stuck, and you are willing to show up, do the work, and go all in, then I invite you to apply to this program. Our next cohort starts in November. Applications are being taken right now for just 22 spots. To get all the details and start your application, go to bemarvelous.com. That's B-E-M-A-R-V-E-L. 
us.com slash fuck yes. Yeah, the, bo- the body keeps the score. I, I, I'm just going to read this text that I got from a gentleman that I helped last Friday. I got this yesterday at 8 p.m. Do I sound crazy when I say I feel like I've been saved spiritually? I feel this immense calmness daily, and it's unexplainable. So mm-hmm. he had an energetic shift, and we worked on anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. And, but we lifted that, and we, he did have an energetic shift because it wasn't his fault. Yeah. But he, honestly, it was, it was like this for him. Yeah. You know? and, and he's working through it. Um, and that's what a breakthrough feels like. A breakthrough, folks, feels like instant, instant healing, instant change, instant relief. Um, and so when I caveat that and say it can take time, like things will can shift in an instant, but there's, you know, it's like layers of onion, not onion. There may be more that then you go I, back I, into. I love the onion. I'll actually call myself personally. I don't look like Shrek, but <laughs> an ogre. Remember Shrek? He's an ogre. Yes, of layers, course. Layers of healing. Right. Just paint me green. Yes. I've healed. I've healed my layers personally. And when I heal me, I heal my family. Yes. And that's um, that feels amazing. And when I get little notes from my clients who are like, oh, my God, Melissa, I wish I would have worked with you, you know, decades ago. And thank you so much. And I can't believe the changes that I'm seeing and feeling. Because the body keeps the score. So when you push down those feelings, it causes other organs to weep. So people can hold a, a bunch of stress in their neck. They can IBS, your old mouse, and can be in the stomach, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. So, you know, migraines, we can heal migraines. You weren't, yes. you know, we're not, we're born a clean slate. Yes. You know, people, you go to the doctor and they'll, they'll they write you the prescription. Well, what what we should be doing is saying, what happened to you? It's not what's wrong with you. We have everything yeah. we need within us. We just have to sometimes take a breath, take some time and, you know, pay attention and be aware of what happened to us. And and, and part of it, part of, I think one of the, one of the reasons why people don't address the issue until much, much further down the road is because it's actually quite easy to bury it, to numb it, to, you know, pack it away somewhere, lock it in a little box and and hide that away. And and we do this all the time. We're almost encouraged to do it because big feelings are uncomfortable for other humans. And we try to squash that down. But then after years and years and years, as you said, that stuff doesn't go away. If when you bury it, you're essentially burying it alive somewhere else in your body, somewhere else in your psyche. And so it's still exerting itself and it still is begging to be processed is begging to be seen and heard yeah but so. and, and really important um that people forget emotion wins over logic emotion wins over logic fear and self-doubt win you yeah. know so many people are scared of, to public speak well they're they're, they're going to find their way out of it or you know they have to but they might rather die right? Yeah. The fear and the self-doubt and fear and self-doubt is what holds us back, right? And in our, in our limiting beliefs in ourselves, but we weren't born that way. You think of the, think of little kids and you think of the superheroes, the, and the princesses, they're not scared. They are not, they, they have, they're fearless. Yeah. And that's when you actually go, oh, yeah, wow, I was that child who was wearing my Superman and my princess thing to the grocery store. Or my kids did that, but now they have anxiety. They were pushed down and they're holding their emotions down instead of being free, instead of expressing their hurt or their anger or their sadness or their shame, pushing it down and causes um, big self sabotage later in life. Yeah. So, so this is a universal truth and um, everyone that's listening to this is like, yep, check that I can relate, but let's talk a little bit about what these healings actually are. Like, how do they work and why do they work? If you can speak to that. Okay, so when I um, work with a one-on-one client, I'll say, hey, if you had a magic wand and you could fix an issue or problem about yourself, what would you want to fix? What issue or problem? But mind you, you're not broken. 
sometimes we get stuck, we get lost. And that's what- Oh, I like that distinction. So so you're not broken. And by the way, I say this all the time too. You're not broken. You're stuck or you're yeah. lost. And those those are problems. That, I mean, frankly, you can fix a lot of things that are broken too. Um, few things are actually broken beyond repair. You know, there's a whole art form in Japan around gluing together broken ceramics with with golds and to to highlight their their beauty and resilience but anyway i digress the point is that model i think is a really powerful way to think of this well and 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 we're going to go back so if somebody wants to work on their alcohol addiction or sugar addiction we can get to the root cause of that now let's say for an addiction issue i take them on a journey in their subconscious mind now, I start with them when I use rapid transformational therapy. I will have them meet themselves as a child in the bedroom mm -hmm. and we'll discuss, are you happy? Mm -hmm. And some might be happy and some might not be. And so we'll, we'll actually have a little talk about what is some, something that someone does or doesn't do that makes yeah. you feel happy. And they might feel sad. They might feel lonely. So then we, we take that little child. And while we go on the journey to heal the root cause of their issue or problem, we hold that little child in our heart hmm. while we, we do. And then we go back to three or four scenes, all to do the root cause and the reason for the issue or the problem or the addiction. Yeah. And the, the client, they come up with the significant imprint, the significant memory, the significant situation. And yes. we tell a story, but we go back in to that situation and we edit this story because we're not six years old anymore and everything is available to us. And that person that hurt us is, you know, we might understand now, we didn't understand then what they were going through, but we might understand now. So it wasn't our fault. Yeah, yeah. And so we go back to three or four scenes all to do with that issue or the problem. We unravel it, we back, you know, dissect it, but we okay. also understand that that's not who we are anymore. So we edit the story because as yeah. a six-year-old, as a 10-year-old, as a 12-year-old, you didn't have the power. You didn't get to say, you weren't seen, you weren't heard, you weren't loved. But yeah. now everything is available to you. Yes. So we edit the story. And then we, you know, we do something called role, function, purpose, intention. And I can go back to that about the issue of the problem. And we realize deep, deep, deep that that's not serving us, that it served us then. Mm -hmm. And we actually thank it yeah, because its intention was to protect us, to help us. Yeah. yeah. But we don't need that anymore. So we do something around that, which is really powerful. Then we go back and we upgrade that little person that we met in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And we let them into our lives, into our heart. And we love on them. like, And we give them all the love, acceptance, forgiveness, everything that they needed or they need now. And we upgrade that child into our life. So as we move forward, we shut down the inner critic that we had because now we realize, wow, that little person lives within us. And it's our time, our privilege, our honor to take care of that, our younger self. It's, it's, it all goes back to peace and self-love. Yeah. It's such a beautiful process. And, and, um, you know, the inner critic being the last thing you just mentioned, I feel like it's not really a shutting down the inner critic in the in the sense of exiling them or like silencing them. It's rather that they no longer have, you know, they the, your inner critic serves a purpose. It's trying to keep you safe. It's trying to help you. The problem is that it ends up spiraling because you're trying to shut it down by silencing it or ignoring it or becoming its slave. So you're either trying to be its master or its slave. Neither is the right relationship. It is your ally and it is information like all emotions are. They're information that are helping you to make better decisions. So this process allows you to integrate that information in a way that's not reactive, right? Or isolating, but rather it evolves into a better version of you where you're operating not like a ping ball, but like the the guy playing the game, right? Like one that knows how to use the paddles and get the high score. And then I think the other thing I really want to point out is if you've never, if you've never done this kind of work, it can sound like it's a very intellectual exercise, like it's a journaling exercise or something. And it's not. It's it's 
really pulling in both your your physical body in the sense that you need to be very relaxed, right? Oh, to okay. access this so that so that your conscious mind can kind of like take a snooze for a minute. You take that hat off and your subconscious mind, which is where all this stuff lives, can can help, right? It can point you to that scene and the next scene. And so you're pulling in um, your senses, you're pulling in your subconscious mind, you're pulling in aspects of your body because you you have a felt sense of these yes. experiences. And you, Melissa, as the therapist, are guiding the client through this. So they're also not going in there alone. And no, just, and they like, are in control. So yeah. when I take someone on a journey, we do shut down the conscious mind, but we actually just don't need that right now. Yeah. So the um, monkey brain, I call it, the mm -hmm. shut is, is silenced for a little yeah. bit. So your subconscious comes up, and you're it's completely safe. Everybody is in control. We have a conversation. I have a conversation with my client, or you know, sometimes I might do a group setting, but they might talk out loud, and we have a conversation while they're in their subconscious space, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they remember everything. We go from alpha to beta to theta. And yeah. we're in this relaxed state where change is necessary. That's why it's fast and focused. Because when we're having the conversation about where the issue with the problem started and we edit the story, we can change the the perception and the trajectory of the of someone's life. They get to edit their own story. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really beautiful. It kind of makes me think of um, you know, this is like a common trope in a lot of action or like thriller type of television and movies where the hacker has to get into this to the mainframe has to get into the system right to do that we have to like shut all the security down temporarily but in a way that it's not going to trip alert the authorities that someone's in there and that's kind of you know that that security system is the conscious brain. It's keeping you safe. It's keeping the walls up around your heart. It's keeping the armor on. It's keeping you protected the mask on like we're good. We got the security. So we're just kind of like working our way around that. So your conscious brain isn't freaking out and calling, you know, all the uh, the, the staff. It's, it's just loves this. Yeah. It's really a wonderful space. People are like, oh, can I stay here? <laughs> because it's it's peaceful. It's calm. And we're never reliving when, when I take someone on a journey inside yeah. the brain or inside their heart um, and they're inside their subconscious mind. They're never reliving. They're viewing, like like you said, it's like almost like a movie. You're seeing yourself in the movie. Yeah, yeah. But you actually get to go in as the adult you, yeah. and and rescue, and unveil that. Take off the mask for that. Yeah, child. Yeah, it's really it's really beautiful. And when we do the heart healing, you know, I take the, someone on a journey inside. Their heart, we meet a younger version of ourselves there. And they might be, you know, might have a trust wound or a worthiness wound, a not enoughness wound, or a love wound, love mm -hmm. wound. Um, and, and this is relationship healing. So we meet the person who hurt us there. And it, sometimes it's a mother, sometimes it's the father, sometimes it's a sibling or a teacher or a bully. Um, but sometimes it's ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we meet the person there inside the heart and then we also get to see well what happened to that person who hurt us what happened to them in their life that made them that way yeah. and then we also meet the unwounded version of that person and there's there's what would they want for us would they apologize and we see the hurt that that human their human self that caused us yeah and we do this thing called pulling the pain cord so we in in our subconscious mind while we're in our heart we envision what these pain cords look like and what they feel like because it's really about how you feel it's all yeah. emotion mm -hmm. and but we pull the cords we pull the anger we pull the sadness we pull the shame we pull the go out every fragment yep. and then we fill that space with love and, yeah. and it might sound crazy like how do you even do that melissa but when when people go on this journey inside the heart and they they heal that there, there's beauty in that. And then we later meet our higher selves. Mm -hmm. And she knows you better than anybody. Yep. And she gives you advice that you need to hear right now. 
Yes. And you listen and it's beautiful. Sometimes there's there's tears, sometimes, sometimes there's not. But you that advice is the best advice you'll ever hear. I might say, well, what what does she, what action does she want you to take? Yeah. And you hear that and it's so real, it's so lifelike. Yeah. That it's yeah. Re- really powerful. Yeah, it, it really is. And I think this is where um I'm always beating the the drum around. 95% of what's happening in your brain is happening in your subconscious, meaning you're not actually aware of it. You know, and that includes things like digest this food, make sure the heart beats, don't forget to take a breath, time to go, you know, like all the things that are automatic. But it's also a lot of the stuff that you can access in these through these therapeutic modalities. It's stuff like shame. It's stuff like regret and guilt and fear and wounds and all, all these things that's running all the time. And it's determining how we show up in the world. Um, what's beautiful is when you can get into the, when you can access the subconscious, you can go in through the back door, so to speak, instead of through your conscious, like thoughtful mind. Right, right over the wall, right? Yeah. 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 And, and your subconscious has this permeability to it that your conscious brain does not because it's not wearing the armor. The armor lives in the, in that conscious part, right? Like that's where we're like ready for the fight. So it sinks in in a different way. It's like you literally rewrite the code back to my hacker metaphor. They like come in and they like fix some stuff and like, voila, the system is amazing again. Um, Yeah. Now, so I'm sure people listening are like, sign me up. How do I do this? And we will talk about how people can work with you and learn more. But before we do that, Melissa, I think it would be fascinating to, to hear a little bit about how you got into this work. You've had some really hard things that you've been up against and had to contend with. I imagine all of that shaped who you yeah, are. Yeah, and I am mostly, mostly on the other side of it. Um, yeah. I've yeah. been on my healing journey for quite a while. I collaborated on a book called When Women Heal. And I kind of tell my story. And I, my story was called The Heart of the Matter. Mm-hmm. And how I became a hypnotherapist and a heart healer, at one of a hundred in the world. Um, I had a full-blown nervous breakdown. When was this? Give us the time. Uh, 2017. Okay. So I have three amazing sons and I was married for 21 years and my life looked perfect. Mm-hmm. I mean, perfect, but close. Okay. Cause yes. there's no such thing as perfect. Yeah. I had the kids, I had a, you know, a great husband. I had a nice house, I had everything, you know, from the outside. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there was, there was turmoil going on. Yeah. So my, Husband and I had something in common. We both lost our moms to cancer when we were children. I was six and he was 11. And that really brought us together. It was like, wow, we have this together. Trauma bonding. (laughs) We we looked alike. We, yeah, we trauma bonded. And we, we, you know, we just like were this really great couple. I personally was on my healing journey for 30 years, just slow and steady, but always healing. Yeah. And he was not. Now, I grew up in a house of love. I grew up with two gay men. My my mother died and my dad actually stayed in the closet for a long time. But I grew up I grew up with, with love and and that is a beautiful thing. Well, when I was a kid, my needs weren't met or how I wanted my needs to be met. So I did I did disassociate after my mom died. I dreamt for years that my life was a dream and she was gonna wake up or I was gonna wake up and she would be there. Mm-hmm. And of course that never happened, but I, I definitely had some disassociation and yeah. I had abandonment issues. You know, there's a lot of that, but then yeah. replaced with two men, that's not what I wanted. I wanted my mom, I wanted yeah. my dad. And I kind of, um, what I, I felt like when I was a kid, I got stuck with this other person. Well, yeah. I lost yeah. so much with all my heart now, yeah. but little, I didn't understand it. Yeah. Um, my husband, hurt boy, whose mom died, he went to school the next day. His dad did not know how to love, did not know how to meet his needs. No, it wasn't his father's fault. He was ignorant mm-hmm. to out of taking care of two sons after a mom died of cancer. Mm-hmm. My husband was a hurt boy who was the people pleaser and, and so ambitious and was a workaholic and all those great things and super successful. But um, something happened and he lost his job because he was an asshole. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because behavior was so poor, it was mm-hmm. so bad. And the venture capital people got rid of him. Yeah. And 
So he lost his job, lost his identity because mm-hmm. he lost his job. Yeah. Totally triggered the death of his mom. And he switched from workaholic to another addiction. Mm. And he started to crater. And so did a lot of things around us. And I did end up divorcing him years later. And he passed away a year later. Now, could have been a broken heart. It was a heart attack. Mm -hmm. But if he could have, and I say this with my whole heart, if he could have healed his childhood wounds Mm -hmm. and his unmet needs and his trauma, everything would have been different because he would have taken care of himself. Yes. Yes. And I say that with my whole heart and and I mean it. And he is, that is my why. I don't always talk about it. I don't put it on my social media. But if we can heal our our trauma and our our unmet needs and see it as an adult, like we go through this time tunnel, we can see how that has hurt us and made us who we are. But you take the good and you let let, let that shit go, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah. not serving us. Yeah. So, so so my husband died. I had a shit storm, right? I had three kids. I was divorced. I got zero. I mean, nothing. I could have been homeless. It was very, very, very scary. I had two kids in college, two dogs, a person in high school, and I was terrified. Mm-hmm. So the anxiety was real, and mm-hmm. I had full blown, I can't function. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started to get professional help. And the professional help was a doctor who wrote me a script for medicine and said, see you next week. Did the Warshad test because I, I did have PTSD and, every, you know, all this big storm. Yeah. Did not work for me. Um, made me feel worse. My son even said, like, Mom, you seem worse. Mm. Couldn't, I couldn't. Nothing was working for me. Yeah. Everything was and off. Yeah. I found um, through some amazing people and higher powers and a nice referral. I found another person, um, healer. His name was Klaus and I adore him. And he's one of my mentors. And he was a talk therapist, but we always found instead of what's wrong with you, hey, this is what's wrong with you. I'm tagging you with the D's diagnosis, anxiety, depression, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah. I can't write that I had. He's, he always found the good in me. Mm. And I always left his office feeling good but one day he said let's try hypnotherapy and I'm like okay and I was applying to go back to Northwestern to get my to go for social work Mm because I needed to support myself um and it changed my life so we went back to the root cause of my self-sabotage and it was so interesting and made so much sense to me how I set myself up in my marriage, because I sabotaged myself on our first argument, I cried instead of standing up for myself. And another one with a girlfriend who was having a bad day and deflected on me mm-hmm. and hurt my feelings mm-hmm. and how I sabotaged myself. And then my, the third one was when, when I was a little girl, my mom, I was naughty for negative attention. And my mom sent my little friend home because I wasn't nice. Mm-hmm. And she sent me to my room and she said, shame on you or I'm disappointed in you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, gave me a little, little tiny time out, but then she died. So mm-hmm. that significant imprint yeah, just wrecked me because yes. in my mind as a six or five year old little girl, I, it's called toxic shame. I held on to yeah. toxic shame of disappointing or, 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 you know, my mom being ashamed of me. Yeah. I never processed it. Right. But when I did this regression root cause therapy i got to go back in see that that was 10 seconds of time yeah she was scolding me as a mother should if i was naughty right. and love on that little girl what she needed mm. and understood it yeah so it, it changed my life i i stopped throwing myself under the bus mm. i understood that i need to stand up for myself if mm-hmm. there's something going on and instead of sabotaging myself and being weak, you yep. know, I'm I'm now unfuckable with. Yes, I yes, I love it. it. That's how you and I connected. Yeah. It's the most important opinion of me is my own opinion. Yes. 
Amen, sister. And this is what I mean when, you know, w- when I say that you you have the answers. We have all of this stuff within us. Um, that's what 95% of your brain, like a lot of that stuff is like this wisdom that is passed on generationally, is passed on intuitively and, through like the earth, <laughs> through energy which we world. can't see. Yeah. And we don't know how to, um, what to do with it or how to acknowledge it and work with it. Anyway, not to get too woo, but my point is you have this within you. The problem is it's heavily guarded by the conscious mind and, and, dis- and you're distracted from it by the external world which is so intoxicating and so busy and so full of drama and intrigue and things to compare yourself to and things to busy yourself with. And if you can make the conscious decision to access and work with what's in there with a trusted therapist like yourself, Melissa, or like Klaus did with you, or, you know, there's lots of wonderful practitioners out there that offer something that can do that, can help you access your own ability to fucking heal yourself. Really? That's exactly. I help people heal themselves. Yes. I'm yes. just a conduit to help people heal themselves. Yes. And um it's it's beautiful. It's amazing. I absolutely love my job. And I love that I get to help people. Yeah. And then, you know, I have found my purpose. And um when we're talking about being unfuckable with, I love, especially with women, but when when someone is good and kind to us and they say, hey, I love your hair. I love that you're your authentic self and I want to give you these flowers and coffee and I just think you're the best. You're amazing. You're marvelous. And so what do you say? Thank you. Thank you so much. And you take it and you accept it. Yes. yes. But let's say I'm in a bad mood and I'm crabby yep. and I see you and I'm like, you know what? Well, fuck you. And <laughs> I'm just going to deflect onto you because I'm in a bad mood. I'm a hurt person. So only hurt people hurt people, which is important. Only hurt people hurt people. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to wreck you, right? With Mm -hmm. words. Yep. Yep. But I've also got this pile of oozing hot dog shit and I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. Now, some people know not, no, I'm not going to take your shit because I don't have to. Yeah. Because people take, this is what I've learned. We don't have to take anybody's shit. We don't have to let it in. Yes. When people, when a hurt person or a mean, you know, a crabby husband or a boss or even a kid, you yes. know, instead of taking their shit and letting it in, yes, letting it hurt us, we can say, you know what? Yeah. Going on. Or yeah. Sarah, you're having a bad day. Is there anything I can do? Or, well, you know, a lot of the problem is the way they the way that they give it to you. Like, this is how they get you, right? They're not like, here, would you like this plate of of hot shit? They're like, oh my god, oh my god, take this. You know, like that's that's the and so and so you're in this like immediate aroused like heightened state where you're like, oh my god, I better take it. Like, I see the funny version of this on Instagram reels where they do like the fake out scare, right? Where someone pretends to be scared by something in a box, and yeah. everyone around them panics. And this is this is what we do, right? Right, right, right. And that's really good. I love that you said that because sometimes we don't feel that we have a choice mm-hmm. but to yeah. take it on. Yes, yes. Or it's not a pile of shit. It's a hot coal. And they're like, oh, this is burning me. Help me. And so you take it from them because you want to help them. And then you're like, now what do I do with this hot coal? P.S. You can drop it. Like you don't need to take it for them. You can help them drop it or take it and drop it. If it like panic does not help us. But these are all metaphors for the same idea of we allow we allow things in that we don't need. We put things on other people that is not fair to put on them. And part of doing this work, part of mental, emotional fitness and why I started this business, why I'm on this podcast every week is to show people that you have a choice. You have agency. There are other ways for you to handle the shit sandwiches that life's going to keep throwing at you, you know? And you you do have a choice. You absolutely have a choice. And you have a choice to stay stuck and stay lost or to heal. Yes. And I'd say, you know, why not heal? Because it is available. It is available. Yes. Everyone. Absolutely. Melissa, if someone was interested in working with you, um, are there any particular criteria or specific types of people or situations that are ideal and that's question one and question two is where will they find you how do they connect with you 
the the most important thing is um, for someone to be open. Because if you're closed off or someone wants you to come for them, mm -hmm. not for you, then uh, then don't waste your time. So willing, um, and open minded, open minded and curious. Probably. Open, yeah. OK. Yeah. Curious, <laughs> curious is good. Curious, yeah. a curious, open mind, because mm -hmm. like I said, you're not broken. You have everything you need within you. So an open mind, an open heart, um, and I can get you to where you want to be. So I'm on Instagram on positive, P-A-S, positive solutions. My main name is Paz. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is Melissa Paz Blake, B-L-A-K-E. Um, Facebook, Melissa Paz Blake and positive solutions and... I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put them these Website. all in the show notes. So if you're driving or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, as a teaser, um, yeah. we are gonna do a group session for the marvelous community. So if you're if you're not a subscriber to the show, now's a good time to subscribe. So you yeah. get the info or you can sign up for our email list and um we will let you know when that becomes available. But yeah, I I personally had the the honor and the privilege of experiencing one of the heart healing sessions with Melissa and it was it was powerful and it was beautiful um, and it was empowering and it was healing it was all the things um and I would love I would love to share that with uh with more of you listeners so find Melissa at any of those places like I said we'll put them in the show notes or get on the marvelous list so you can find out about when we're doing stuff together or better yet do both because um <laughs> she's got different things to offer than we do and vice versa and the, but at the end of the day, we share this one thing in common. We want you to have agency over your own well-being, over your mind, over your body, over your soul, over your nervous system. Um, there are so many beautiful ways to do that. Beautiful people like Melissa out there who are trying to help the world heal. So um, reach out to us, ask for help. We, we're, we're here for you. And you know, I hold in my heart that it's never too late to make a change. And when we ask for help, we get respect, self-respect, because we all need a little help sometimes. And that's okay. Yes. yes. It's absolutely I okay. I agree. And, uh, yeah. And when we heal ourselves, there's a ripple effect to our loved ones. Absolutely. And so beautiful. When we heal us, we heal our family. Yes. Yeah. We get to be the first person in, in your lineage who, instead of running from, from the same you know patterns and habits or repeating them, uh, consciously or unconsciously, you sort of turn and face the fire and 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 allow yourself to you know rise from the ash of it. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, the change maker in the family because when yeah. we change the generational wounds, and a lot of women, I mean, we hold seven generation. You know, we have wounds of seven generations. Yeah. We can be the change maker. And you think of passed down trauma, but passed down behavior, passed down uh, fears and phobias. Yeah. Uh, we can we can clear up. Yes. Yes. So powerful. So beautiful, Melissa. I'm so happy that you reached out to me and that we met and connected and that now my listeners get to hear about you and get to know you. I just think the work you're doing is fantastic. It's like time travel, essentially, but in 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 a healing format, not just for the sake of like seeing what could happen or what did happen. Oh, oh it's truly changing shit. Yeah. We can go back and heal the root cause of the problem or heal the relationship. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it is beautiful and it's powerful and it's positive and it's fast. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. I love you. Um, can't wait to work with you some more. And to all of our listeners, thank you for joining us. And we will be back next week. Stay marvelous. Did you know that just five minutes of daily mental fitness training can completely transform your mood, your mindset, even your life? Sign up for our free five-day mini course and we'll show you how. You'll learn the same super simple, super effective techniques used by professional athletes and recommended by the world's top behavioral scientists to reduce stress, improve focus, stay motivated, and recover from setbacks like a champ. Head over to BeMarvelous.com and sign up now for this free five-day training. That's B-E-M-A-R-V-E-L-U-S.com.